on the subject of that there was actually a really cool interesting article regarding the whole issue with football at the moment in the Premier League I think we're in a position where well so far we have the league on his is fish is officially cancelled right league on league two league on league two sorry is maybe cancelled no individual is the Dutch league is effectively cancelled due to the fact that they won't be able to host events for people you know up and uh, I think after September so they've effectively made that league null and void and that's gonna just you know go where it's gonna go because there's clubs complaining about how it was dealt and people can get fined but that's officially done Liga and Ligue 2 will definitely get finished because um, I think um, uh, their guy Macron whatever his name is right is it Macron um, he dis- he declared that there were not gonna be any sort of large scale events with more people blah 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 in the same sort of vein and now it's left up to the Bundesliga and I guess the Maybe the Serie A is the same, but mostly the Bundesliga and the Premier League to kind of make the next move. But of course, no one in the Premier League wants to do that because they're afraid of uh, setting off a series of events that's going to lead to a lot of people getting fined. But I thought Gary Neville made a really good point regarding the whole issue on so Sky Sports. I'll read a little bit of it now, but let me actually get what he actually said. But I think Gary Neville made a really good point regarding it all. If I can get up on the screen for you guys to see. Um, speaking about why exactly we're in a situation we're in now, but I think I mentioned it pri- privately, but I'm not really convinced there's going to be, I'm not really convinced the Premier League have actually uh, thought of a scenario where some players will refuse to play, number one, because they're, you know, they're like me and you, right? They have access to the internet, they're reading the news. They probably have maybe a couple of people on, on the inside working in hospitals, nurses, doctors who are also giving them some information. I don't know, whatever. They're just, you know, they are, they're living in this moment the same as we are. There's no guarantee that these people with families, with brands to look after, right, are going to necessarily be that comfortable um, putting themselves back on the front line to play football for no fans um, with, especially with the uncertainty around the tracing and the testing and just general health and safety they're just not going to do it and i think the Premier league are making all these plans about how they're going to restart things without actually consulting the people who are probably second to players who are the most important no second to fans i say who are the most important which are the players um and guy never sort of touches on it saying that you know they need to make some sort of decision sooner or later it's a tweet from sky sports i'll play a few just now so you can hear it Boom. I think it's very difficult to pick up the league if you go as far into September because of the contract situations uh, with regards to the players that are at the existing clubs. So you've got you know lots of players that are out of contract all across Europe that ultimately, I think maybe an extra month would be palatable, but the idea of going into August and September <laughs> is something that I think will be very difficult to implement. And you're right, I, the government in France have stepped in our government at this moment in time, I saw uh, the test in the water, typical of what our government do, they test the water over the last few days to see whether football can return, whether it's palatable to the fans, the, to the public. You know, these £4 million worth of tests that the Premier League is buying will accept it. So they drip feed a bit in each day, as do the Premier League. They test the water, see what the sort of feeling is, and then they'll make a decision off the back of that. The reality of it is, I think that the Premier League will probably wait for the Bundesliga to see how they go, and then they'll react off that. But I keep coming back to... The, we will be in the stadiums Kelly, Pat, we're looking at the games and we'll be commentating on them but the minute one player one member of staff goes into intensive care what are they going to do what are they going to do and that's the bit that's on this shoulder telling them to risk, to risk and they're not sure they're not sure, they really are not sure at this moment in time how to deal with it and that's and that is how it should be really I, I think the level of um, hesitation they have towards putting things on is ma- makes a lot of sense. I guess there's a lot of money on the line. There's a lot of jobs on the line too. If you get it wrong, reputational damage is going to be irreversible. You know the Premier League doesn't have the best reputation in terms of making decisions, in terms of leading the you know the in terms of kind of pushing things forward. 
um they kind of slow to react on a lot of things they sort of do hide behind the premier league the league officials referees association stuff that's going on with var there's a lot of issues um even the kick it out kick it out football the anti-racism campaign hasn't really been dealt with the right way so you get the feeling they are waiting for the government to make a decision but that's not going to happen either because the government are also very aware that their sentiment isn't the best at the moment right boris just announced he's having a baby and people are already piling onto him regard you know what i mean like this guy can't get any kind of breaks so imagine the premier league so i think the only option on the table now would be just avoid it and just carry on again next season however however it may however the chips may fall whoever gets affected gets affected but just deal with it that way i think all this time wasted trying to work out these solutions where you have people playing in the england you know training facility and you have people hold up in the hotels it's just not viable like how long is it going to take their players to be physically fit to play football in the first place it just doesn't make any sense really i don't really know what they attempt what they intend to get out of it it's going to probably cause a lot more damage and good and i think um Julian Lopetegui I think it makes if I got it here Lopetegui Lopetegui how do you spell his name Lopetegui Seville manager he made a really good point about it Seville man oh that marker right was that marker Lopetegui uh what's it how do you spell his name logo yeah so uh, Lopetegui made a really good point former Madrid manager and Spain, Spanish manager and manager of Seville about what's required in order to get the players back to you know the level of fitness needed in order to play football behind closed doors even right or just competitive football in any way shape or form and I didn't actually know this so this is the point that he made here from this is from a marker article so if I can get the point up here da, 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 do you think it's an alternate call um, so here he goes right let's see if I can find it but um, load up is from marker so it says the following um do you think they are nervous about returning to the or scared to begin effectively he said yeah love to take it here he says all the players are worried about returning we want to return to play but there is this, this there is a concern over how in what we way and how in what way we have to trust the good practice of sports establishments and the ministry of health the main people responsible who have no guarantee the health of all our players Aside from that, it is a preparation time that we need at least five weeks to be able to be able to play a match every three days in an emotional scenario that is difficult to understand that no one has ever seen before. It's also, it's not just about playing behind closed doors, it's so we will need that best conditions. He said there is a precedent in the NFL from 2011 where there was a sp suspension for three months because of a working problem and that led to 12 ruptured Achilles tendons in the first month of competition back when they had five back when they had the five the whole season so this kind of goes back to the point if anyone that's you know trained or anyone that's like played five-a-side football um you know you would know that there's a big difference between playing that kind of football in a five-a-side right uh power league whatever maybe taking that to 11 aside and taking that to doing that every saturday every weekend right it's a whole completely different ball game. Even if you're somebody that's you, you think you're physically fit, you run a lot, you go to the gym, that actual performing or playing to that level against an opponent that's also trying to beat you is just a whole different ball game of fitness. And it doesn't, you know, no amount of training on the treadmill, no amount of running in the street, no amount of push ups or, you know, home gym work and stuff is, is ever going to replicate that. So to get the players back to the necessary, just you know baseline level of fitness or performance which isn't you know again they're still gonna need a few games to get quote unquote warmed up it's gonna take five weeks then on top of what Lomotech is saying there's no guarantee that you're not gonna have just a whole bunch of injuries you know spread across the entire league especially towards some of the better players who might then affect the way the league shakes up and finishes because if anyone thinks you know the league is happy with certain teams winning it you'd be dumb in it right they want certain teams to get the top four they want certain teams to win it because it looks good for the image overall um, they can't really do anything if Sheffield United, if Sheffield United end up winning the league. It's not really the best, you know, scenario for the Premier League really in terms of uh, promoting it um, to a global audience. Let's say, obviously for us fans, it'd be fucking sick to see a team that small do something like that. But for everybody else, they don't. It's not something they want to see. So, I think it's obviously going to do more damage than good. You know, having some of your top players out because you decided to have them play, you know, free games. I mean. What did it say? Uh, three games every five days or something. 
or play a match every three days it's just insane and the bit you mentioned here too which i didn't actually come which i didn't actually think about was the emotional scenario of it you know how players are when they some of them when they come back and a member of their family passed away or they were you know involved in a really i don't know crucial game even just a week before like imagine during a week you had a cup game that you lost some players that tend to carry that that ill feeling um roll it over into some of the next games like there's loads of things that happen just day to day you have an argument with your missus and you had to play a match imagine spending you know the best part of two months at home locked in confined and then hearing about your teammates relatives who have passed away in their homeland and all these stories you're hearing and then being suddenly told hey snap out of it you gotta go and perform and play in front of nobody in a state you don't recognize you know with this whole new procedures you have to go through it's just it doesn't make any sense so i can't really see them it got it happening that way because you know the brands and sponsors won't be happy either when some of their best clients get pulled up you know, pull up in the first couple of minutes of playing the game and they don't have a way to earn money, right, on that side as well. So it's a real, real horror show for everybody involved. And again, if there was a way to do this in a in a, a way that made sense, I think they would have done it anyway. I just, like I said, I think with like Aaron Edwards and Sunny, I just think the Premier League are afraid to make a decision. They're afraid to look ridiculous. They don't want to... Um, they don't want it to come and blow up in their face so they're just waiting for the government to make a decision for them the government will probably say you know hey no events nothing big until this certain date and then they'll decide hey by the way we can't do anything either and put their hands up in defeat but it would be great to get a Premier League to make decisions so that players could you know have some peace of mind managers and teams and owners could then make some plans for the next season make the necessary adjustments whatever it may be that's what they should be doing but I have heard a theory that the reason why they're delaying so much is there's also a clause in their contracts or an obligation for them to explore every single avenue every single avenue or scenario try and see if it can work and then if you've got a cancer avoid you got to do it and also it might just be a waiting game it's, you know they might have a clause in the contract where they can't necessarily avoid or cancel the season it has to come from the government right they have to mandate something and then because it affects you you don't have to pull out and then that way you don't have to maybe pay a fine or whatever punny charge i don't know but regardless it's going to be interesting to see how this kind of shakes out in the next few weeks because there's going to be some tough decisions to be made for all involved especially the teams that help pro- the ones that really going str- <clears> to <throat> the ones that are really going to struggle the teams that are like battling for promotion or battling to stay up that's going to be really difficult how they deal with that how they decide what happens like because i think the dutch league are going through that aren't they right where they avoided the season but they still are honoring the teams that promoted or the teams that were in the promotion places that's where it gets dodgy i think you just have to start the season again like that's it you just avoid this one you used to begin it how this one started there's no way you can really you know if the team's in the playoff spaces but there's no guarantee you know they've got just as much as right to go up into the next league as opposed to people that got the guaranteed space isn't it because that's how it works out so again i don't envy that decision to make me that's a tough one really a real tough one let's move on so what do we have here next we've got boris baby timing bad in it really do you give a shit i know i don't um it's a it's a weird one, isn't it? I'm not too sure if you'd want to even announce this if that was you knowing what's happening in the country and what's going on, and how it will be received. Um, but you might do that thing that a lot of politicians do, where they just ignore what's happening in it. They just kind of act like it's not really a thing, it's not a situation. Um, but yeah, I guess congratulations to him. This is a news from BBC. He says Boris Johnson and Carrie Simmons and was both of his son, um, which which might be interesting news because i wonder what they did in terms of him suffering from it did he have to kind of quarantine himself away from his family i'm assuming he did right he's got probably the top physicians assisting him in that regard so you know there was probably no danger of anything happening to the kid which is great news but just how it's how this is all shaking out for him it's been really interesting to see like you know his lack of leadership lack of leadership and you know clear leadership i'd say i think he's been he's done all right so far but just some bits are a bit you know muddy but this article says the prime minister boris johnson the the fiance carrie simmons have announced the birth of their son as spokeswoman for the pm and his partner said both mother and baby are doing well it's understood miss johnson who has recovered from uh, coronavirus was present throughout the birth as nhs over to london but he has now returned to working down the street down the where he's leading the response to the pandemic of course they had to put that in there um 
he is expected to take a short period of maternity leave at some point later this year. Down as you said, the couple have received messages of congratulations across the political spectrum. And Mr. Johnson's father, Stanley, said he was absolutely delighted and thrilled by the birth of his grandson. Down she declined to comment. Uh, declined to say whether the baby was born prematurely and did not provide the other weight timing nature on location as they shouldn't in it some of the questions people these ask him as like How, what is that your business the pm and miss simmons would like to find a uh, so yeah worrying week into mr johnson 55 and miss simmons 32 fair enough and they did well there announced in march that they were expecting a baby in early september early summer sorry and they had become engaged at the end of the last year. They're the first unmarried couple to move into Down Street together. The baby is Mr. Simmons' first child, while Miss Johnson is known to have fathered five. <laughs> Why are they putting these details in there? Try to make him sound like a bad dude. Um, the family are planning to continue living in the, in the flat above number 11, Down Street. It's understood their dog didn't. Uh, this is a nonsense news. But yeah, what can you do? He's, They've got a baby. Um, the country is on the brink of collapse. And, you know, what can you do? Is what it is.